Multicarp Vault Learning Series point of view. Ninth topic is Vault Deployment Architecture. So I am in a certification homepage. So if you scroll down, explain Vault Architecture. So here there are a number of topics, but I have divided into the two different videos. So in this video we will try to understand architecture. In other video we will cover the rest of the things like agent, caching, and identity groups, etc. So now. So we know very very high level architecture. This is the vaults architecture we are seeing from the every video, right? Core storage, secret engine, authentication, policies, and audit, etc. But if you see bit more deeper on the architectural part as per the documentation, right? So there will be a barrier which is the core barrier. right and the second is a storage backend which is loosely coupled where you can choose a number of storages right and authentication method this is the one of the major right where you can connect with the various auth methods and secret engines yes vault is offers a variety of secret engine and vault has a system backend so we know auth methods system backend but there is a system backend where vault will have a slashes etc right and there is a audit broker audit device this audit topic is completely not in this particular vault associate right uh, but we will try to see that's why an advanced now and vault will expose as a rest api which is secured https api for the clients where you can connect with the not only command line there are different clients are available to connect to vault so if we learn that vault whenever you provision a new server you need to unseal it so how this unseal is if you we recap world server will have a storage right so that storage will be encrypted by using a one encrypted key which is in the key ring so this diagram represent now this key ring is encrypted with the root key this root key is encrypted by using a unseal keys which is nothing but a shamir unseal keys shamir keys etc so here basically three step process the storage will have a key ring encrypted master key that will be with the root key root key with this one so that's how the unseal process will work uh, this is purely from the documentation right now second vault storage so whenever you are provisioning a vault server so we 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 have to configure the vault configuration which is vault.hcl is the configuration file this looks like a terraform so and vault is a one is file storage second is external storage so if you look at the file storage you will be specifying a path where you wanted to store the vault specific data or else if you have a console server you expose in 8500 and just whatever the console server you need to map so but one configuration doesn't have these two but just for the example purpose i kept both right and you can configure the replication and listeners blah 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 all these things in the configuration how you wanted to expose yeah another important is in the vault deployment architecture point of view integrated storage versus external storage so what are the differences so whenever you choose a integrated storage which is nothing but the wrapped storage right so and hashicorp is supported but if you choose the external storage something like a dynamo db or google cloud database spanner or any other database right so and there won't be any support from the hashicorp and by the way this is not a sponsored video this is purely just for the learning purpose i have created right yeah second is operational point of view so operationally if it is a in created storage so no additional software is required it's a very very simple and where are the external so you need to configure for the all the high availability etc right and another one is a troubleshooting monitoring part of you you so you need not to monitor troubleshoot because it's integrated so there won't be a much hassle but if it is external then you need to continuously check the health etc and data location where the data will stored data will be stored on the same host where the vault server run because it's integrated right and if it is external means that we need to take care of the encryption etc right and you need to separate physically where the data is there 
so this is a very very high level and this by the way this diagram is available in the documentation so need not to worry need not to note down need not to take a screenshot so now so there is another difference integrated storage console storage versus vault storage right so here integrated storage is raft storage console is their console database so in this this right so the difference is if it is a integrated which is a file storage file storage means of course it is on the disk and no backup strategy not required but if it is a console this console is also by hashicorp but what we need to do is hashicorp will maintain that data into their own memory and they have a its own system requirements etc so that we need to take care but maximum message size is a 1 mb if it is a file and if it is a console then 5 to 12 kilobytes then that's also you can overwrite by using this particular parameter so so we need there is a some learning curve of uh, console if you wanted to set up right now vault high availability cluster with the integrated storage so i have a taken a one vault server with the raft storage which is nothing but a file storage right and these are the three servers and i have made it as a one cluster which is under one group so which is behind the load balancer some load balancer right so and this load balancer is of course is exposed with https right and one server as a leader and other server are the follower so typically it's a three node cluster for highly available with the integrated right and you will seal and seal by using either kms if it is aws and azure also there is a key and google cloud also there is a key so you can use that key to seal and seal that you can configure as automatic all right this is a typical integrated vault high availability cluster so how about the vault cluster with the same console database so this is again three node uh, cluster with the vault server active and both are stand by which is also called the leader and follower follower and the second is a console cluster so 1 2 3 4 5 typically is one console has a five node so five node uh, console database cluster and as well as uh, vault server cluster so you are connected of course it's exposed to the load balancer which is uh, layer 7 and every vault server will expose a rest api that rest api will be connected to load balancer and this load balancer will where as a clients will connect here of course vault server in order to operate you need to seal unseal and root keys are required of course any kind of setup you need this but if it is a cloud then you can configure an automatic right so yeah leader and follower now next vault with the console architecture so if it is a open source version if you wanted to use vault and as well as a console both so this is architecture uh, where this is recommended by the hashicorp this is downloaded from taken from the documentation so here main thing is uh, three availability zones right uh, one is availability zone one availability zone b c so in a one each availability zone one vault cluster will be there and those will be connected for the performance point of view whereas its databases will be stored in the spread across the multiple zones so in since it's a open source maximum up to the five right here that's what the from the documentation i am not I'm not expert from the console but five so here the uh, basically this is for the zonal coverage point of view right uh, where this uh, will be under the this three vault server will performance point of view which will replicate and whereas this console database will replicate if in case of one zone outage the traffic will be sorted from other zones that this is better for the one or two one zone or two zone this what the and if you leverage the vault enterprise version then there will be a great benefit there first of all the support from the vault ashikar and the second is every every zone have a their own non voting uh, follower for the console in case of this console will fails or anything so there will be a dr and there will be a performance replication as well so performance replication at the 
storage level and as well as the vault level and the same the setup everything will be same port numbers etc right typical vault will expose us 8200 and a cluster level 8201 right that we have seen and console is a, these are the ports so and more information please read the vault console uh, architecture this is just for the high level idea now vault multi cluster region resi resilience so here if you are using a vault multiple clusters right in the region one say us singapore and mumbai or maybe chennai any region you take so this regional every region vault vault server will be there and cross regional dr replication will happen so us2 so singapore singapore server is in india and india vault servers dr in us so in case of anything is goes down so basically this is for the regional resiliency right the same setup regional resiliency so one is this this is a cluster for the performance replication somebody uses from india somebody from singapore somebody from us this will be served and in case of dr if is us is completely goes down then completely this uh, dr will be picked up and cluster resiliency so what's the difference here is here cross regional dr replication we are doing in case of regional resilience we want if you want a cluster level then within the same region your dr will be there but whereas performance will be served from the various regional so only the difference is here apps need not to reauthenticate and full resiliency at cluster level so that's a one of the great benefit because if one region two singapore will goes down then you need not to your apps need not to reauthenticate apps are nothing but the whatever the vault clients now the next vault highly available cluster and replication and dr this is also all these topics i have choose from the this syllabus so that's why i am in uh, incorporate into, into this my ppts so yeah this is a country map some right so this is a one active cluster this is one active this is one active cluster so this is a one country the where the traffic will be served from the three different locations say like in new delhi say this is gujarat and this is a chennai let's consider right so this is the way performance replication happens so if this area guys is trying to hit so the traffic will be served from here and every cluster will have active and standby every cluster active standby so in case of anything problem this standby will be activated as active so this is the for the performance in with respect to, to dr every regional uh, this particular regional specific dr server will be located as a standby cluster here standby server standby cluster within the same region say let's consider this is a gujarat or this say this is a mumbai this is a new delhi and this is a chennai something like that right its replications are there this is a very simple uh, not much complicated but only the thing is vault commands are bit complicated now vault enterprise replication this is also one of the important uh, with respect to, to exam i have heard that in the exam there may be uh, some questions but yeah so vault enterprise replication point of view first of all the same same as uh, this map but this is bit elaborated in the same country so one here active and standby right here so one active and standby which is primary and there will be a two secondaries so one active two standbys with the complete as a vault cluster this is vault enterprise server and as explained in the previous right only the the difference is the replication two two things here one is performance replication second is a dr replication performance replication point of view in order to serve the traffic easily without any issues low latency so this will be used and 
asynchronously it's replicates so there won't be any hard connectivity or continuous synchronizing something like that it will asynchronously leader and follower approach yes l and f we have we have seen in the previous slides right then yeah primary and secondary so and one more thing is end to end encryption between the primary to the secondary right this is the primary secondary secondary say one two three so one two two one two three all with the end to end encryption and that to be mtls so mutual tls so i have made a video on mtls on a kubernetes so the concept is same here as well mtls and it will use as a self signed ca same like a kubernetes right so since it's completely an enterprise suit so they will issue a self signed ca so that all the whoever the this dr secondary or dr primaries primaries dr replication specific cluster will use as the same right and another benefit of the world enterprise replication is secondary activation tokens are available so if you look at the documentation this is the enterprise replication so they have mentioned here right uh, how these things can be done and all all the details are here right now uh, in the enterprise replication point of view two two things performance and dr right so here the major differences what i see is uh, in case of performance replication the token mirroring is won't be there tokens will be at the primary but whereas the secondaries will keep track of the token and leases why means if primary goes down and you will make the secondary as a primary then apps need to reauthenticate since the server is changed so that's what the and the yeah secondary cluster to handle the request yeah so performance point of view only the secondary will handle otherwise unless the dr happens and vault dr replication so dr replication point of view as we have seen here this is for the enterprise servers one primary and two secondary right and so service tokens and leases will be maintained for the cluster a and c and cluster b only the thing is here access control policies secret configuration authentication methods audit configurations to be defined then second is to you for the dr replication you need to have a two enterprise servers one is primary and secondary secondary now how the things will work is first you will set up performance replication between the cluster a and cluster c then you will be setting up the dr so how is enable the dr replication on the cluster a so first you set up a performance replication after that then you will be setting up the its dr replication on the cluster a cluster b so like that right so here the b i specified but the cluster c to d right so that's how the and how the workflow failover so whenever you set up this right uh, performance replication it will be something like this then uh, once you set up is done uh, including the dr then when you fail over then automatically secondary will be promoted yeah that's it for this particular theory session i hope this will gives you the some idea so all this information can be found uh, you go to the prepare for the exam right uh, and review guide scroll down scroll down so here the, all the topics are here explain vault architecture describe cluster strategy right uh, and everything will be there and also vault associate study guide also you scroll down here there is uh, some points are mentioned here what you need to study here right so this is as a part of uh, this particular syllabus i hope this particular session is helpful and there will be another one or two videos are coming up on this particular Okay, thank you. Let me know what you guys think in the form of a comments. Thank you. Bye bye.